On the one hand, the rocks. On the other, the whirlpool. Scylla, the many-headed ocean monster with sea waves crashing against her craggy shore, splintering ships and killing crew. Charybdis, the whirlpool sucking everything that came near into the vortex of its hungry mouth, dragging ships and sailors to the bottom of the sea. Odysseus, standing on the deck, knowing that navigation through this narrow channel is impossible, but on the other side of the narrow channel lies the calm sea, the way home, home to beloved Ithaca and the beautiful Penelope. This choice, calamity or devastation? Odysseus sails through. Now, you may think this is an odd way to start a, a talk, uh, especially the last talk of the day, the day the talk that's supposed to inspire and, 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 and embolden and send you out to, to conquer the world. Scylla and Charybdis, death and destruction. <laughs> no good answers, no satisfying choices, no way through. Well, hang on with me for just a little bit. Let's see where this goes. Scylla is our consumer society. Gobbling irreplaceable resources, fouling the air, the water, the soil, poisoning our children, spreading environmental cancer. Charybdis represents the loss of creature comforts, chilling winter nights and, and sweltering summer days, uh, reading by candlelight and, and foraging to survive. Is that the choice we face? The only choice? Living fully into the decadent life, the life where we slowly or not so slowly suffocate on our own excrement, the off product of our selfish ways, or, on the other hand, embracing the life of want, of desperation, just a step above the cowering animals, feeding on one another, dying at an early age. Or maybe there's a channel through this maelstrom, a way to save the earth without sacrificing our very selves. Odysseus steered a path between Scylla and Charybdis. It was not without pain, it was not without loss. But on the other side was the calm sea, the gentle breeze, and the way home. My question is, can we find the way? Our use of fossil fuels is destroying the planet, bringing a slow and painful end to our way of life. In the wisdom of the universe, plant and animal matter were carefully sequestered within the earth, safely tucked away so as not to upset the balance of carbon that would bring on the warming that, that could, that would end life as we know it. Ah, but humans found these deposits using the great minds which evolution bestowed on us. We tap those resources to, to heat our homes, to drive the engines of commerce, to propel ourselves at unimaginable speeds from the familiar yet boring places where we live to new places of, of intrigue and, and mystery, and then to bring us back safely to our homes. And little did we know, until very recently, that the warmth and the commerce and the excitement of travel were destroying the very place we love, making no place ultimately safe, no home ultimately secure. Father Pierre Thiard de Chardin, a Jesuit scholar, a biologist, and, and author from the first half of the 20th century, 
wrote in the aftermath of the voyage of the Beagle uh, and the um, development by Charles Darwin of a theory of natural selection, Teilhard proposed that all evolution moves toward what he called the omega point, that mystical future where all creation will come together in unity in the mind of God. Evolution of consciousness, he anticipated, was a product of the evolution of matter and thought, and human beings, above all animals, are capable of thought. Thus, human beings hold the promise of the way beyond this present desperation, the way to the climax of history when all of mind and matter will unite in one purpose, and that purpose is love. Ah, but you say, last week, President Obama, our great hope for the environmental future, approved drilling in the Arctic Ocean. Our friends, the Saudis, won't talk to us because we're talking to their enemy, the Iranians, who, by the way, think that we are the incarnation of evil. Bee colonies are collapsing. Los Angeles is going dry. Des Moines is flooding. And every day, dozens of species vanish from the face of the earth. And Hartwell talks about love and the omega point. My friends, we're approaching the stormy passage between Scylla and Charybdis, and it's time for us to make choices. There's no turning back. What good would that do? Nothing good lies on this side. If we stay where we are, we await certain, a certain end. No, the only answer is to sail on through the tumult, certain of loss, and yet confident that home lies beyond. Sailing through means loving completely and living unreservedly. Without loving that which lay beyond the passage between Scylla and Charybdis, without the willingness to take the risk, Odysseus could not have braved the passage without loving the world in its totality, without committing to it fully and sacrificing for it willingly, we will founder in the channel to be dashed on the rocks or, or sucked into the whirlpool. Does sailing on mean sacrifice? Well, most assuredly it does. We will have to give up some of the comfort that We've come to know there will be financial cost. We'll have to, have to accept a, a new culture, a, a, a renewed way of seeing the world, a different kind of relationship with the rest of nature. We can no longer be the dominator. We must accept that we are simply one more element of the environment, yet, yet one with a special responsibility that comes with consciousness. Now is the time to own Teilhard's vision of unity in the omega point and to accept the fact that it cannot occur without our active engagement. Today I call on you to grab the tiller and steer this ship called Earth, or at least that little piece of it which we call our own, Steer it toward a higher level of consciousness. Love deeply. Love animals. Love humans. Love plants and trees and rocks and mountains and deserts and oceans and little trickling spring brooks. Sacrifice a comfort. Go without a luxury. Speak up for the victims of climate change, for Inuits whose food stock is depleted, 
for Sudanese dying of thirst, for Bangladeshis whose homes fell to typhoons, for polar bears and coral reefs, for Bengal cats and leaf cutter ants. All are our sisters and brothers. In their suffering, our lives are diminished. In their deaths, we die. Odysseus carved that <clears throat> channel between Scylla and Charybdis, <clears throat> and he found the calm of the sea beyond. He found his way home, home to the faithful Penelope and his brave son, Telemachus. We too can find our way home. We can advance the purpose of history and propel all creation toward unity. Be bold, be faithful, be courageous, be loving.